racing for a total of $20,000, the largest purse ever for a supercard race in Australia. On pole position is Robert Stewart. Beside him is Bruce Weeks, then Shane Wilson, then Paul Zasman, and they're racing 10 laps, 45 kilometres of this track. Two of the cars, Bruce Williams, stalled yes. on the grid. Yes, we've got some trouble, troubles there. The uh, couple of the back markers have stalled, and uh, that could create some problems at the back of the field, but I think most of the leaders have gotten through without any dramas at all. Into the leaders, Paul Zazrin, the many times Australian champion, brought out of retirement for this race. Already two of them off on the first chicane. Hearts pumping out there. Yes, it's, uh, it's a very tense time for the drivers, the first lap, and uh, that's when it normally brings out some problems. But um, Zazrin's out in the lead now Behind and doing very Rob, nicely. Behind him is Rob Stewart. Then comes Shane Wilson in the cart 27. All of these leads carts, Anderson Rotex is the Anderson frame, built in the UK, Rotex engine from, uh, from Austria. And these carts capable of 260 kilometres an hour as they work the back straight for the first time. Yes, Cesarin's got a nice lead over uh, Stewart at the moment and um, he's pulling uh, pulling nicely up the back straight. We've got a bit of a, a view from above here. That was the coming together in the first chicane just to show just how say how quickly these cars can lose control. Yes, they spin very, okay, very now into the lead is car 34. That's Rob Stewart, the Queensland driver. A man probably past his prime, you'd suggest, 44 years of age and only four years into kart racing. Yes, uh, Rob started late, but uh, he's really picked it up in the last couple of years and is one of the most professional operators in the karting scene now. The kart we had expected to see up in the league was kart 19, Bruce Weeks. In fact, there he is right there, the red kart, back in seventh position. Yes, uh, I think he may have uh, had problems with the, with the engine on the start, but uh, I'd say that once it clears out, he'll probably be right and start picking his way through the field. It's a long race, and these guys will probably take a couple of laps to settle in. These carts, not as fast, obviously, as the Indy cars, but they are as quick as the quickest of the NASCARs. They're as quick as the quickest of the Porsches, and they're substantially faster than the Oz cars that you'll see on Channel 9's program today. Yes, these things are quite incredible in performance. They're very, very high power to weight ratio and uh, the cornering speed is quite phenomenal and that's where they really do make up some time. Live rear axle, that means there's no differential at all in the in the, in the cart, which means when you pitch it into a corner, you have to just fling the thing sideways, but not and there. Yes, and there's been contact with the wall. That was Bradley Moore, 19 years of age, uh, one of the famous Moore kart racing family, three of them racing here today, but in the lead is this man, Rob Stewart, from pole position and doing it comfortably. A lead now of almost a second, and that's really a substantial lead in kart racing. Here comes Bradley Moore's crash again. Now that's a 125cc cart. Most of the carts racing here today are 250cc twins. That is, they have twin cylinders. Yes, and uh, the 125 is running a single cylinder, and uh, but uh, still, yet yeah, they still perform very well. Stewart seems to have quite a nice lead now, and he's settled in, and the, the cart seems to be very, very smooth, and uh, he seems to be doing a very nice job at the moment. Seven thousand dollars is first prize for this race today. Ninety cart ninety in second position is Paul Zazrin, and behind him, and really now starting to make the urge for. Third position is Shane Wilson in 27, but that's the view that you're seeing from Rob Stewart's lead car here as he works down the back straight, past the ocean, now through the first of two chicanes on the back straight, and this view, almost as good as you're going to see this afternoon from the Indy cars. Yes, he's, he's just pop sex gear now, and they'd be doing about 145 miles an hour. Two-stroke engines, motorcycle engines, therefore with a motorcycle gearbox, don't use the clutch. You see his left hand working down through the gearbox. He's got six speeds in that gearbox. The top speed is geared for just over 250 kilometres an hour as he now moves back into second cog for this of the chicanes. And then up into the essence. Now... In that lap, Zazrin has substantially caught Rob Stewart. In third position is Shane Wilson, now really yes. starting to throw out the challenge. Wilson settled down nicely. I think he took a little time there to, to settle in, get the tyres, but Zazrin's got trouble. He's put his hand up. That uh, could mean that there's some drama ahead for him. That's normally the signal that they use, but he's back into it again and seems to be going OK. But um, Zazrin uh, has, uh, has got a little bit of a gap again on uh, Wilson. Down the main straight, over the start-finish line. The gap, in fact, 
is just under a second, 0.97 of a second, as Zazra now really works under brakes, and just look at Wilson moving around, bucking and weaving in third position as he tries to bring this cart down. Keep in mind, of all the racing you'll see today, these are the only vehicles without suspension. The yes, these things run a, a solid frame, and uh, the only suspension these carts really have is in the tyres. That's the only movement that you've got in the chassis, and uh, that's why you'll notice that the driver's heads are bouncing around pretty badly, because this track is fairly bumpy, but particularly at the end of the straight here, you've noticed. This is the first race of today. It's a 10-lap event, but for 10 laps, 45 kilometres for these drivers is an endurance event. It's a marathon, and uh, I think a lot of these guys will be taking it very, very carefully for the first few laps because um, fuel could be a problem. These cars are limited to how much fuel they can carry, and tyres can also be a problem. It's fairly hot, and uh, I think these guys are, are just settling in at the moment. Now, down in the third position comes Bruce Weeks. This is the New Zealand champion. He's won the New Zealand Grand Prix two years in succession. He was back in seventh position at the start. He's now moved up into third place, and he undoubtedly will start to throw out a challenge, firstly on Zazram and then on Stewart in front of him. Just look at the different line that he takes through that fast left-hand or right-hand sweeper, now right onto the tail of Zazram. This man yes, he's the oldest driver in the field. He's 52 years of age. Yes, and uh, Robert Guy seems to have spun there on the inside of the corner, and uh, that has allowed, I think, a change for second place. Yes, yes it, has. it has. Up into second place now comes the New Zealand champion. That's the Yellow Weeks. flags are out. There'll be a problem around the next corner. The, the station of the Yellows are out. The guys can just take it carefully through there. James are now back in the third position. In fourth position now is Shane Wilson. And in the lead, of course, is the local hero, Robert Stewart. This is a very, very experienced field. You've got uh, Paul Stevings now making a move on Wilson up into fourth position. Stevings had a few problems this morning, but he's a multi-Australian champion and very, very experienced. And uh, I would think towards the end of the race, he'll make a real charge for the lead. Five times has Paul Stevings won the Australian Championship, still not at the halfway point. And this man, the New Zealander, cart 19, as they come up to lap cart 44, Ken Pierce, the TZ 250G cart. But uh, Stewart seems to be doing it easy. He's got a very, very comfortable lead at the moment, and uh, he doesn't seem to be extending himself. He seems to be driving very, very smooth, and the cart's uh, very stable. I think uh, he's looking very good at this moment. Stewart taking a big risk this weekend, in fact. He's oh, and almost gone, yes. almost gone was cart 19, Bruce Weeks. Just lost the thing in the corner. The driving technique with these carts is not to brake and steer through the corner. It is to brake before the corner, then set yourself up in a huge four-wheel drift. Yes, it's, it's, these things are really are driven on the throttle and uh, they have a, a very, very uh, high horsepower engine and they're really exciting to drive and uh, uh, a lot of steering comes from the rear end. Imagine, if you will, 80 we horsepower being put out by a 250cc machine. Weeks is, sorry, Weeks has really dr uh, dragged Stewart in here in this last lap and uh, I think he's in the draft and this could be quite, a, uh, quite an exciting lap, this one. The carts weigh only 195 kilograms and that's with the driver on board. That's the minimum weight they're allowed with the driver on board as Weeks now looks for a way down the inside on Stewart. Can't find it there. Weeks has really amazed us all this weekend. He's using the most unusual lines around the circuit, but seems to be able to go faster by doing so. Doesn't take the classic uh, line of going in from the outside, then sweeping across the apex. Cuts his corners a lot tighter. Yes, and it seems to be uh, proving very effective at the moment. Uh, I would say at this stage that he's shadowing uh, Rob Stewart, and uh, I think Stewart's now starting to put the power on, uh, obviously feeling the pressure, and uh, this could uh, tell towards the end of the race. Stewart, of course, taking a real risk this weekend. He's become the Australian porter for a new brand of tyre, the Vega tyre. Weeks, on the other hand, on the more traditional Dunlop tyre. And it could well be that on this hot circuit here at Surface Paradise today, the tyre wear will be the deciding factor. Yes, Vega have uh, produced some special tyres. There's quite a few of the guys using them, and I think um, this, this challenge has really been thrown out now, But and the tyres could be the problem. The Dunlops have been around a long time, and they've had a lot of development, and uh, they uh, have a lot of experience with making car tyres, and that could prove a... Uh, uh, a bit of a problem for the Vega tyres towards the end of the race. These two drivers now really rushing away from the rest of the field. You can see the gap there. It's almost daylight back to third position as Weeks now looks for a way down the outside again. Can't find it there. But he's better set up now to take a run onto the back straight. Now just watch him slingshot out of this corner. Yes, he's, he's really getting into it now. They, they seem to be drawing away from the, 
from the rest of the field. These two are pushing each other. Stewart's had a look over the shoulder then. Not he's, a wise idea, mind you. Not at all. He's starting to feel the pressure. That's a bad sign for Stewart. Uh, um, Weeks is just shadowing now, and I think, you know, he's... Here he he's, comes. He's, he's, he's got it. Beautiful he's done move. It out of the draft. Now it's up for Stewart to see whether he can get back into Weeks' draft and retake him as they come onto the back straight. Just look at the aerodynamic bodywork on these cars. Weeks especially has done a lot of work on that. He's the only car you'll see in the entire field with a windscreen sitting up on top of his aerodynamic bodywork. Just look at this from the back of Rob Stewart. Almost runs up the back of Weeks in the S's it's in the uh, in the chicane. Stewart's lost some ground from that move, though. He's had to back, he's had to brake heavily to miss the back of the other car, and uh, he seems to have lost some ground. But uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he can pull, pull it back. Coming now through the S bends, and this is where these little cars really come into their own. Faster through here than even in the Indy cars. Yes, was these things. Than yesterday, and these cars are just going marginally quicker than the Indy cars through the series of S's. Yes, their cornering speed is quite phenomenal. The centre of gravity is so low on these carts, and their tyre width and uh, and uh, chassis development really does give them an edge in cornering. Just look at that four-wheel drift. Isn't it sensational stuff from Weeks in the lead? He's really putting the power down nicely. It's uh, drifting out of the corners, but. But Rob Stewart's obviously got plenty of horsepower and he seems to be dragging him back in again now. He's got in his toe. And, and these two drivers just in a class of their own. They have sprinted away from the rest of the field. Yes, the, the, other, the other drivers have been left behind. This is a real ding-dong battle for the lead. Now keep in mind that uh, the guy in second place, Rob Stewart, has only been racing for three years and he's still learning his craft. Yes, Rob's uh, come along very, very nicely. He's uh, got a very professional setup with his carts. He takes it very, very seriously, and uh, he's very much responsible for getting the carts organised through this weekend for the racing. His brother Nevin, in fact, a full-time tuner, they're the only team in Australia to own their own dynamometer. Can you imagine owning a cart worth $20,000 and investing $60,000 in a dynamometer to tune it? Five years ago, John, a, a, a dyno for a two-stroke cart engine was unheard of. Yes, they're taking it very, very seriously. Um, at the moment, Rob seems to have settled down again, and uh, Weeks may be feeling a bit of pressure now that he's in the lead, but Rob's just sitting in there shadowing him, and uh, he's looking quite comfortable in second and maybe looking for a late charge. Third position now has been taken by Chris Lindner, and fourth position is car 55, and that's Monty Brown, the local driver who's in fact being tuned by some of the best of the two-stroke motorcycle races on the Gold Coast. Yes, well, I'm, I'm very much surprised that uh, the likes of Stevens and Zazman have been left behind in this battle because I really expected those two guys in particular to to, uh, to run at the front and pressure these guys, but they've just been left behind. It's uh, phenomenal. Now, Bruce Weeks starts to open a security gap as he comes into the back end of the circuit, and it's here if he can work it hard this time. He ought to give himself enough of a lead to be able to hold out. Uh, cart 34, Rob Stewart for the rest of the event. Yes, uh, I think I saw Zazarin's car parked up against the wall back on a corner or two back, and uh, that could, be, could explain why he's not up in the front. I think he may be out of the race. Yeah, both carts 90 and 27. Paul Zazarin and Shane Wilson have had it coming together, and both of them have retired from this inaugural supercar race here on the Gold Coast. Passing now Bradley Moore, the man you saw spin out earlier, and he's the first of the carts to be left. Bradley, 19 years of age, in a 125cc machine, has Rob. now down onto the back of Bruce Weeks comes Rob Stewart. Yes, Rob's uh, charging again. This uh, this is good tactics. He um, keeps putting the pressure on him, and uh, it, it, it's it's never over until the checkered flag's out, and anything can happen at this stage. In fact, he's got a nice run on out of the chicane, and uh, is right in the toe. Anything could happen here. Both of these carts built by the seven times world champion Russell Anderson in the United Kingdom. Both of them now with a brand new front suspension system on it. They don't run suspension, but they've now got adjustment on the front end where they can actually adjust camber and caster. All the nuances that the IndyCar drivers can build into their machines now can occur on the front of these carts. 25 seconds now goes back to third place, and that's now been taken over by Monty Brown. Yes, so uh, these, these, the chassis development in supercars has come a long way in the last few years. These guys have full adjustment with caster and running anything between 15 to 20 degrees caster, and the camber is fully adjustable, so they get the absolute most out of the tyre. You notice also that they're using aerodynamic wings on the rear of the car. So as now Stewart charges down the inside, looks for a go. Stewart's car substantially wider than that of Bruce Weeks, and it makes it a little bit difficult. I mean, I know it sounds silly that these carts are wide when you look at the size of the track, but it really makes it difficult for Weeks to find, uh, uh, for, for Stewart rather, to find a way through. 
this. Wix has is, um, is started to, to lose some ground and uh, Stewart's really starting to apply the pressure now. Um, it could be that the tyres on, on Wix's car maybe have gone off and uh, maybe the Vega tyres that Stewart is using really are going, going to do the job for him. Well, Stewart now is in a sensational position to be able to throw out the challenge. Every time round on that double apex, apex corner coming up to the main straight, Weeks throws the thing so much that you've just got to reckon that Stewart's tighter, more economic line is the faster way through. Lap traffic gets in their way now. Card 80, Bernie Weir gets very quickly out of the way. I, I, I think that uh, Weeks's card is, is very much less stable under brakes. Uh, Rob Stewart's vehicle is, uh, seems a lot smoother and uh, that could be a telling point towards the end as well. That's hard on the tyres when the carts are skipping across the front. Three laps to go and in fact Weeks did yesterday suffer from having a, uh, uh, an electronic uh, ignition breakdown in practice which has precluded him from at least one session of practice and it could be just that lack of track time that's making it difficult for him here today. It's a very difficult circuit to find your way down around. You're so low on the track that you have no definitive braking point. When you get into the braking point you don't even know which way the corner goes many of the times. You're really driving in a tunnel with that concrete wall up higher than your head height. Yes, you'll notice that uh, Weeks has turned, uh, turned his head then, uh, which is quite dangerous, but these things don't run mirrors, so it makes it very, very difficult for you to actually know where the opposition are, so looking around seems to be the only way. Stewart again pulls out of the grass just to let Weeks know he's there. It wasn't a serious overtaking attempt because it was on the wrong side of the track, but he was just putting the pressure on this man from New Zealand, twice New Zealand Grand Prix champion Bruce Weeks. Yes, he seems to uh, have opened up a little gap again, uh, uh, he's looked over his shoulder and realised that Rob Stewart's pretty close to him and uh, seems to be applying a little bit more pressure and has uh, drawn away a little bit, but Stewart's uh, still charging and I don't think this, this race is over yet. Cart's lapping at about 2 minutes 16 sec uh, 2 minutes 7 seconds rather, that's a lap average, 116 kilometres an hour. They rev to 14,000 RPM as now Rob Stewart goes for it on the inside. He's going to do it. He's taken back the lead. This, uh, this is a titanic battle and uh, uh, Rob's cart was definitely handling better through that back section of the cart and he's pulled a big gap in, in uh, just a very short time. So Rob Stewart back into the lead as we come again down the main straight. Two laps remaining in this battle for the Gold Coast Supercard race. $20,000 in prize money up for grabs, $7,000 for the winner. Next year, they're hoping to make it $30,000. Next year, I think they'll have a, a lot more people racing. This really has been a, a sensational race, and I, Rob Stewart seems to have problems. Could it be that his front spoiler's come adrift? It looks a bit strange, but no, maybe it's okay. Yes, there's a lot of money up for grabs here. This is, this is the biggest prize money that Supercarts have ever raced for. So there's a lot at stake here. 26.98 seconds is the gap from uh, second place back to third. Third place, of course, is Monty Brown driving the Anderson Yamaha. These two, uh, these two cars, both using the Austrian Rotax engine. Third place using the more traditional Yamaha motorcycle engine. Yes, Rotax uh, uh, specially built supercar engines, and one of the, th the reasons they're so, uh, so good is because they're a, a tandem twin, which is a bit, makes them very narrow and uh, makes it easier to, to sit the driver alongside the engine and get the weight balance much better. To give you an idea of the speed of these carts, around Phillip Island, these carts lap Phillip Island with a 250cc engine as fast as Wayne Gardner laps on his 500cc Honda. And they lap Phillip Island two seconds faster than the Australian touring cars that race in our touring car championship. Yes, these things really are phenomenal in performance and uh, I've seen many touring car drivers pretty shocked at Calder in practice sessions in one of these little monsters just flying fast. Just on six kilometres of racing remaining now. As here's the race for, uh, for third place occurring between car 55 that's Monty Brown and Card 8, Chris Lindner. Lindner, race, the Gold Coast driver, so is Rob Brown. This race certainly isn't over either for uh, third and fourth, and uh, with just over a lap to go, this could uh, see some, some place changes as well. Lindner driving an Anderson Rotex, Monty Brown, of course, as we said, in the Anderson Yamaha. 
the aerodynamic wings on the rear of the carts intended to push the carts down into the track to give them more traction. In fact, most of the drivers here have wound the ring right off to be able to get maximum speed down the straight. By winding the wing right off, that is having no aerodynamic down thrust, they're getting at least an extra eight kilometres an hour. As now Linda really throws really out charged. the challenge on Brown. And he's got a better on run the outside, out of the he's got to do it. A better run. Side by side down the main straight now. And Lindner takes over third spot. One lap remaining now as they cross the start-finish line. 4.5 kilometres left of the surface this paradise is... track. There's the race for the lead. That's our race leader, car 34. That's Rob Stewart. And way back now in second position is Bruce Wicks. There he comes just around the corner now. So a gap of at least five seconds being opened up from Bruce Stewart and this man, Rob Stewart rather, and this man deserves to win this race here today because he's the man who pulled all this together. He's the man who got all these cards here this weekend. He's the man who's taken time off from his business to make this race the success it obviously is going to be from here on in as this Gold Coast Indy Car Race becomes one of the classic meetings in Australian motor racing. This has been a very, very important uh, PR exercise for the supercars and uh, this will only help them go on to bigger and better things. Half a lap remaining now and Rob Stewart's heart would be in his mouth. You've no idea how much this man just wanted to compete here, let alone undertake winning the event. That never really entered his head. Now this, there's no doubt in my mind that this is probably going to be one of the, uh, his, his greatest moments and uh, he does deserve it because he's really put so much effort into organising this event. A very modest man. He says, I'm still learning how to drive these cars. There are champions here today, he said, who can do it so much better than I can. And look at this. Rob Stewart has pulled out the magic result. He's now on the straight. Nothing can stop him now. He's going to win the first race here on race day at the IndyCar Grand Prix. And Rob Stewart flashes across the finish line. Now in second place. Oh, quite a way behind comes Bruce Weeks, 5.25 seconds behind. Then in third position, the race will be between cart 8, Chris Limner, and cart 55, Monty Brown. And they are daylight back. There's cart 8. That's, uh, that's Chris Limner. He's in third position, just now coming onto the main straight. And yes. Monty Brown himself has dropped back a fair distance. He's done a good job to come up in position seven. He's driven a very steady, smooth race and looked after the machinery. Crosses the line now, 31 seconds in arrear of second position. And there's our winner. Rob Stewart moves in to the accolades of the crowd. Rob Stewart, a deserving winner here at Surface Paradise Raceway today. This there's the man Stebbing. coming into fourth position, Paul Stebbings. No, 55 Monty Brown has been through. So Paul Stebbings will be in. There's the final position. Rob Stewart wins this inaugural race here today on the Gold Coast from Bruce Weeks, Chris Linder, Monty Brown, Ken Shulderman, and finally.